Welcome to USMLEFastTrack.com. The section we're going to talk about today is from First Aid for the USMLE Step 1, 2013 edition. Page 214. Shock. What is hypovolemic shock? Hypovolemic shock is shock due to low blood volume levels. What is cardiogenic shock? Cardiogenic shock is when shock occurs due to decrease in heart functions. What is septic shock? Septic shock is a serious condition that occurs when an overwhelming infection leads to life-threatening low blood pressure. And the reason this happens is because there is peripheral vasodilation. Name all the features of hypovolemic or cardiogenic shock. In hypovolemic or cardiogenic shock, there is low output failure. That means the heart is not able to pump out enough blood, and this could be due to decrease in heart functioning or due to low blood volume. And when the body does not get enough blood due to decrease in heart function or low blood volumes, it will increase TPR, which is the total peripheral resistance, just to compensate for that. So when the compensation by increasing TPR is not enough, the body goes into hypovolemic or cardiogenic shock. And so in hypovolemic or cardiogenic shock, the blood is going to try to get away from all the peripheral tissues, such as the skin, and get to all the vital organs just because whatever amount of blood that's circulating gets to all the vital organs just to make sure at least the vital organs are functioning properly. And by doing this, there is going to be vasoconstriction and this leads to cold and clampy skin. What are all the features of septic shock? In septic shock, there is uncontrollable vasodilation throughout the body. And so in septic shock, the blood is moving away from the vital organs and going to all the peripheral tissues. And therefore, this is considered the high output failure. There is also decrease in the total peripheral resistance. So this decrease in total peripheral resistance is also making the blood go away from the vital organs to the peripheral tissues. Septic shock also causes dilated arterioles and high venous return. And the patient with septic shock is usually hot because of all the vasodilation. There is more blood supply to the periphery. Therefore, the patient becomes hot. So that's how you sort of differentiate between hypovolemic and cardiogenic shock because in hypovolemic and cardiogenic shock, because all the blood is trying to go to all the vital organs, the person becomes cold and clammy versus in septic shock when the blood is trying to get away from all the vital organs and going into the periphery, the patient becomes hot. For more information on this topic, click on the link in the description section below. For a full USMLE Step 1 review, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com where we help you review the entire first aid for the USMLE Step 1 with high quality videos and hundreds of detailed pictures for a better understanding of the material. So to learn from the best USMLE review book, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com.